All right, so here's another video on, video on confidence intervals. And this one, sigma is unknown. All right, so it's, it's the same thing. We have x bar minus e is less than mu less than x bar plus e. So this would be our confidence interval and we have to calculate e. So in, in this problem, the population standard deviation is unknown, which is sigma. So if you watch the other video where sigma was known, you notice this critical value, okay, the critical value. Last time we used the standard normal curve to find the critical value, and that's when sigma is known. If sigma is unknown, we use the student's t-distribution table. Okay, and well, actually, this sigma here, that should be an s. Okay, I had a, a typo. All right, so there's e, and c is your confidence level, and t sub c is the critical value for confidence level c, and your degrees of freedom is n minus one. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our example. All right, so it says the heights of seven trees are measured. Below are the heights of the seven trees, and here's the, here's the measurements of them. And I guess it can be, we can say it's in inches, okay? They want us to find a 99% confidence interval for mu, the height of the entire population of trees. All right, so in this problem, well, we know, we know that uh, E is equal to T sub C times S over the square root of n. Okay. Well, we need to figure out what s is, t sub c, and then if you remember in the formula here, we need to know x bar also. Okay. The sample mean. All right. So, let's find x bar first. I'm not going to show the calculations, but all we would do is add all of these up and then divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so you add them up, divide by 7, and that would give us 46.14. All right, now to find the sample standard deviation, well, you would have to use your formula. S is equal to the square root, the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n divided by n minus 1. So you would have to calculate this. And if you're at this point in statistics, you should, you should have already done this. Okay, you should know how to do the sample standard deviation. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the calculations. It, it would take a little while. You would have to take each one of these, square them, sum them up, and that goes there. And then you sum them up, that goes here, and then you square those, divide it by n, divide that by n minus 1. So I've already calculated it, and this is S is 1.19. Okay. Now, in in some in a lot of problems that you'll work, a lot of times they'll go ahead and give you s, and they'll give you x bar. Okay, so if that's the case, you don't have to worry about calculating them. I just wanted to work a problem where it wasn't calculated, where it didn't give you give it to you, so I could explain that you do ha you would have to go and find those. All right, so. And we know that n is 7. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So the other thing that we need is we need our degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, which is 7 minus 1, 
which equals 6. We're going to need this value to look up t sub c. So now let's find t sub c. Now we're looking for a 99% confidence interval. So we'll have to go to the student's t distribution table. Remember, a 99% confidence interval and the degrees of freedom is 6. So let's pull that up. All right. So in this table, they have a c value here. Okay. They have my c for the confidence interval. So I'm looking for a 99%. So I'm going to come across here. There's my 99%. All right. And then my degrees of freedom is 6. So I'm going to come across to where these meet. And you can see it's this value here, 3.707. That is my T sub C. Okay. All right, so let's go and write that down, 3.707, that's T sub C. Now, on some of these tables, let me erase all this, some of these tables do not have this row here, the C for your confidence intervals. Some of them won't have it. So what do you do if that's the case? Well, we're looking for a 99% confidence interval. So we will take 1 minus 0.99, which is equal to 0 0.01. Okay? And you'll do the same thing. You'll go the degrees of freedom is 6. Okay? And then you look at the two-tail area where we get this 0 0.01 okay and it's where they intersect it, and there's your 3.707 okay so that's how you would look it up if you didn't have this row here okay you, you can see this picture here see this area here that's your 0.99 and the 0 0.01 well that's here and here. So if we half that, we would have 0 0.01 over 2 and 0 0.01 over 2. Okay, And the confidence interval, it's a two-tail, so we look at the two-tail area. Okay. All right. So now it's just a matter of plugging everything into the formula. So E, and here's my formula, is 3.707 times S, 1.19, over the square root of N, which is 7. And I get 1.67. I rounded it to two decimal places. All right, so my confidence interval is... x bar minus e to x bar plus e. And I know in the formula I had, it said x bar minus e less than mu less than x bar plus e. Okay. All I did, this is the same thing. All I did, instead of writing it as an inequality, I wrote, I'm writing it as an interval. Okay. So this is going to give me 46.14 minus 1.67 to 46.14 plus 1.67. And my confidence interval is 44.47 to 47.81. So I can say that with 99% confidence that the population mean of the tree heights will be between 44.47 and 47.81. This is my answer. 
All right, so I hope this helped, and uh, I will be doing a, another video of this uh, using Excel to calculate it. Okay, so I'm going to do these videos by hand, and I'm where you have to work it out by hand using the table, and then I'll do them again using Excel. All right, so hope this helped. Uh, check out my other videos. And I do have a video on where sigma is known. And then I'll also do one where we do a proportion. So hopefully you'll check those out. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks.